In this tutorial video I'm going to walk you through the process of importing a PLY file and georeferencing that data. So we'll start by opening a VRGS project and we go to our data tab, find our triangular meshes, right click import. For the filter type we select PLY and then we find the PLY file that we want to import and select it. should just wait a moment while it processes. There we go. Right click and go to and that will center the, th the model on the 3D view. Now we can see from the orientation of the north arrow that this model is in a pretty arbitrary orientation. So we need to reorient it and georeference it. For photogrammetric data, we can use an approach where we use orientations on the outcrop here defined by some rulers that were put on the outcrop when we collected the photogrammetric data. If I right click on the mesh that's been imported and select make, make active a new triangular mesh ribbon bar appears at the top of the screen. First thing we need to do is make sure that the model is scaled correctly. So we'll go to rescale and we know these rulers are one meter long. So I select one point and the end. It tells me at the moment that that distance is 72 centimeters, 73 centimeters. So we tell it that's supposed to be one meter and that will rescale that data set to the correct scale. Now we need to correct the orientation of the data and we can do that using the add orientation tool. So we select that and we click along the plunge of the ruler in this case. So we select top down to bottom. If we've already got plunge information imported so I can do that from interpretations and here I'm going to go import and bring in some orientation data we can add that directly to the imported orientation so what we have here is the current orientation shown in red and the target orientation shown in green the target orientation is the plunge of that line that we would have measured in the field. So in this case, it's locality 2. So I've got a plunge of 72 towards 85.038. So I'll find my tie point. So I can select my target dip. and then my target azimuth. And that's the target. We need to do that for another orientation. If we have two of these orientations, we can fully solve the overall orientation of the model. So I'm gonna go back to add orientation. One, two, and this time, because I've got imported um, orientation data, I can do get, and I know that's locality three, and it automatically fills in the correct values for me. Once I've done that, I've got two orientations. Now the correction buttons become active, or the one for orientation does, so I'll select that, and it should reorient the model and correct it so the model orientation matches the orientations of those plunges that we collected in the field. So now we see our source and target orientations match up fairly well. We can do that for several orientations so we've got some more here 
So that was locality 4. So of course you can import input that data directly if you have it written in your notebook. So we've got two more to go here. Add orientation. Six. Orientation seven. They already match up quite nicely. And then we have two more orientations down here. Add orientation. Orientation eight. That's better. And then add orientation. This will be orientation nine. That fits in there. Now we've got all of those orientations in. We do from orientation again, and it will correct it back to all of those and do a best fit to all of those measurements. So any error will be distributed among all of the observations. So that's our orientation correction. To bring in um, our positional information now, we're going to add in a GCP. And we have in our 3D model, we can see where the GPS, the handheld GPS is on the outcrop there. I can put a GCP point in there, geometric control point or a ground control point. I'll open up the mesh and we see we've got the GCP has appeared in the type points list. I'm going to go to waypoints and import and I happen to have a GPX file of GPS positions that were collected on my, um, on my handheld GPS. It's brought in all of the waypoints. A lot of these we don't need. I know that our measurements started at position 65. So I'll delete all of the others. 65, we have our X, Y, and Z position in UTM coordinates. So let's go to my tie point. So I've got target X. target Y. I'm just using copy and paste here. And our target Z position. The line that you see is the difference or the vector between the current position and the target position. And the target position is a huge distance away because these are in UTM coordinates. Now we've got a single um, GCP in. We've now got our correct from GCP button available. We select that. The model disappears from the screen. Right click, go to, and now we should have our model pretty much fully georeferenced within the accuracy of the GPS that we used. And there's our waypoint. Switch all the waypoints off. And there's our control point. You can see how inaccurate the waypoints are here. These are all waypoints taken from the using the Garmin handheld GPS. It's just a normal GPS, so the accuracies aren't that great. But the positioning, the orientation data is better using the plunge method than it is extracting data from this, this kind of GPS. So that's our data fully georeferenced and we're ready to start interpreting it.